Rejoice, people of God. The light has come into the world. O oh God, now we light the candle of your nativity. With the company of heaven and with sounds of great joy, you come to us. This is a time of light and resplendent joy. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. The evangelist Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels. Glory to God, peace on earth and goodwill. John declared that this great light is Christ, the word made flesh. The great light lives among us. By it we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. At Christ's nativity we now rejoice. God, our light and light, thank you for coming to us this night. Thank you for touching all heaven and earth with your splendor. In every corner of the world, shine this night with your peace. In every corner of our hearts, shine this night with your grace. Glory be to God and peace on earth.
remain standing for our gospel reading. Tonight we hear from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come to Bethlehem and see Christ was birthing angel sing. Come not to Bethlehem and see Christ was birthing angel sing. Good evening. Let me try that again. Good evening. evening. What a blessing it is to be able to gather in this place this evening and to offer ourselves in the worship of Christ, our King, the newborn King. What an opportunity we have to gather on Christmas Eve and celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, the Messiah. We welcome you here today and are glad that you are here and worshiping with us this evening. There are a couple of things I do need to mention to you. Later in the service, there will be two things. One, we will share together in Holy Communion. And let me just say to you now that you're invited to Christ's table. The table is open. Whether you're a member of our church or the United Methodist Church or not, we invite you to come and partake with us this evening. We will be partaking by intention, which means you will take a piece of bread and dip it into the cup. And then follow through in the stations that are there. And our ushers will help give direction when that time comes. Also, at the end of the service, we will share together a time of candlelight and lighting our candles. Uh, Notice there are some safety um, um, uh, issues, uh, safety instructions that are in your bulletin for that. It's helpful if your candle is lit to hold it straight up and let those that are not lit light from it. It also helps our, uh, our building superintendent not fuss about the wax on the floor. I'm joking. Uh, not really. But we do, uh, 
want to be sure that we do do that. At the end of the service, you'll notice that there are pottery containers at the exit doors that we'd like for you to place the candles in. So please do that. Tonight's offering uh, will be taken for our missions fund. Um, God has truly blessed us and continuing to bless us as a church. Let me just say thank you for your contributions, but you have until December the 31st at midnight to give them in for this particular year. Uh, the, the great thing is next Sunday is December 31st, so you can bring it here, or there is a box located if no one hits here in the building. There will be some people in and out this week, but there is a box located that you can drop that in as well. Um, just a word of thanks um, for those who contributed to the gifts for uh, staff members. Our staff truly appreciates your generosity and your gift this time of year. Thank you so much on behalf of the staff uh, for the gifts that you have given. And last but not least, uh, if you have um, done, uh, uh, purchased a poinsettia in honor or in memory of someone, please take those with you tonight on your way out. And there may be some extras if someone else has a need or someone to deliver some of those too. We do need to keep a few here for people who may not have been able to be with us tonight who may want to come and pick them up this week. So please join us in all of that. Will you join me as we go to God in prayer? Almighty God, what a blessing it is to gather in this place to witness to our faith, to celebrate around your table, to join hands and hearts with family and friends in this special time of year. Oh God, as we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray that He may be born anew in our hearts. In these moments, take us away from the hustle and bustle of those things that keep us so busy and help us to pause in your grace and in your love in the presence of Christ. Oh God, come and be with us, even in the midst of the struggles that we find ourselves in. Bless those who need to know your healing touch. Stand with families who are concerned about whether their child will make it or not this night. Continue to journey with those who battle cancer and other disease. And continue to walk with us even as we age and stumble and fall. And be present and near. Bring healing, hope, and strength. Oh God, speak to us this night. For we pray it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
did appear, which put the shepherds in great fear. Prepare and go, the angel said, to Bethlehem, be not afraid, for there you'll find this happy morn, a princely babe. It's Christmas Eve. The candle has been lit. Luke 2, verses 1 through 20 have been read, right? It's what it should be. As a pastor, I struggle with what to say on Christmas Eve because it's the same passage, it's the same scripture, it's the same service year after year after year, and yet there's this deep welling thought within me that I have to say something new and creative. And yet it's the same story, isn't it? It's the same story that we come to hear. It's the same characters that we want to be and need to be reminded of. It's the same journey that reminds us of our own journeys Characters that come into play during this season of Advent and Christmas and now come to the forefront on Christmas Eve. John, the baptizer, the one crying out in the wilderness. Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John, who have their own miraculous sort of journey as well. A girl named Mary. A young lady, we're told, we would call her a youth, a maiden, a virgin, one who was betrothed, engaged to a gentleman named Joseph. And yet in the midst of their journey, something wasn't quite normal. In the midst of their journey, all of a sudden, a messenger from God appears. We call them angels. And the messenger says, don't be afraid. (laughs) Maybe it's enough tonight for someone to hear the message from God saying, don't be afraid. That God is in the midst of the situation. 
that God will be with you. And so Mary believed. Mary trusted. She had a little bit of time convincing Joseph of all that she had heard (laughs) and all that was about to take place. And yet Joseph had a messenger from God himself. And he listened. And he followed. And he stayed true to Mary even though it meant the abnormal happening. And so they journey. They journey because of a decree that had been sent out for them to go and be counted so that we could get an accurate role to tax folks, right? And so they take the journey. Even though she is expecting the child any moment, they take the journey and they arrive in Bethlehem. And when they arrive, they find there is really no place to stay. They thought that maybe they could get out of this. Maybe they had just not planned the trip. Maybe it had happened suddenly that they realized they had to go. But all of a sudden, they were there without provisions, without a place to stay, without a place to go. And so we enter an innkeeper. An innkeeper who is not able to bring them into a a warm place to stay, but simply offers a place out in the barn. And so there they make their way. Cattle and sheep and donkeys all come into the scene, right? And there in the midst of the cave or the barn where the livestock sit, a child is born. Shepherds, shepherds out in a field realize something different's happening. And they get a host of messengers from God who come. Again, we call them angels. Who lead them to the place where this child is born. And they gather around. And they kneel. And they pay him homage. In the center of it all is not some king that entered into a palace or not some great hero who showed up in town, but a baby. A baby wrapped up in cloths and lying in a feed trough in a manger. And in that moment, in the center of it all, God comes to earth. And why does He come to earth? So that He may be present with us. Emmanuel, He's called the Prince of Peace. The messages stated here are many. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the Son of David. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. His birth ushers in a time of joy and a time of good news of God's favor and a time of peace among those who please God. The good news is that this Jesus, this Messiah, this Son of God has come not just for a select group of people or not just for the shepherds, but for all people. For all of humankind, it's a sign of God's favor, and heavenly voices proclaim it. There are visions of angels. There are shepherds who come flocking to that manger. And yet, in the middle of it all is a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. We come tonight to worship. We come tonight to offer our hearts anew to the message of the proclamation of Jesus' birth. We come, and what should our response be? I think our response tonight is much like those who witnessed this birth the first time. Our responses are that we should wonder. Wonder about what this is. Wonder about what happened 
to have a sense of wonder about God's goodness and God's peace. We're called to praise God because God has entered our world to be present with us. He's entered our world to redeem us and to give us hope and life. Our response should be glorifying God and rejoicing. And our response should be pondering these things tonight in our heart. I love it when the scripture says, and Mary pondered all these things in her heart. Becoming a deep part of who we are, this child seeks to become part of us, to journey with us, to save us, to bring us hope, to bring us peace. God visits us with his favor, and we are called tonight to bow down, to worship, to wander. And to ponder in our hearts how God will transform us. As we gather around this table this night, may the presence of the living Christ come and speak to us. May he be born anew in us so that we may proclaim his kingdom and his work throughout the world. Amen and amen. In the silence of the night, the wondrous gift is given. In a small town called Bethlehem, let us sing of the nativity with the nativity carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. with us has come to touch our world, our lives. God with us has come to bring us out of the darkness into a glorious light. God with us invites us now to come to the table, believing in the promises of God fulfilled tonight. 
Here, love is offered and love is found. In the sharing of bread and cup, here we find our journey's end and its beginning. Lord, we have lived far too long in dark places of our own making. We have walled ourselves in, shut the world out, and held ourselves captive to our fear and failings. Free us from this place, Lord. Return us to a life in your presence where we may see your face and face the trials of this world with you by our side. Restore your light to our eyes that we may behold anew your love in our lives. Hear us, we pray. We wait in eager anticipation for the glory of your salvation this night. Hear the good news. A child has been born for us. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with truth. Light, love, and salvation have come to us this night. Christ is born, and with Christ, we are born anew. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest, and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has done. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I'd like to invite those who are going to assist me this, this evening to please join me around the table here. All things are ready, and you're invited to come. Again, you're welcome at this table. Come seeking Christ, and Christ will find you here. Our ushers will help give you direction as you come.
Darkness is overcome by light. Despair gives way to hope. Prisoners are freed. And death is vanquished by the promise of salvation. Christ, Christ is, is born. born. Hallelujah. Amen. May we light the candles, reminding us of the light of Christ that comes into the world. Please stand.
light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome it. Go forth to shine with the light, with the love of Jesus Christ. Go forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.